Hello, I'm joined in the studio today with the directors of three local agencies with some very important missions. Since 1981, the Community Action Agency of Somerville has worked to reduce poverty among local families and individuals working to counteract and whenever possible eliminate the societal conditions that cause and perpetuate poverty. Since 1998, Shape Up Somerville, a city agency, works with a wide variety of local organizations and municipal departments to continue to improve the city's culture of health. And Project Soup is a branch of the Somerville Homeless Coalition, and it's a food pantry out of East Somerville on Broadway, and that is available for Somerville residents. Joining me in the studio today are David Gibbs, Executive Director of the Community Action Agency of Somerville. Welcome. Hello. Lisa Robinson, who is Director of Shape Up Somerville. Hi. Welcome to you. And David Jacobs, who is Program Manager at Project Soup. So that was a, a very superficial overview of, e <laughs> of each of your missions and uh, what it is that you actually do. Mm -hmm. um, so I would ask each of you maybe to, to elaborate on that. Yeah, David, okay. why don't, you, why don't okay. we start sure. off with you? All right. Uh, so Community Action Agency of Somerville has several programs. Uh, the largest one is Head Start, which is a federally funded uh, preschool and family service program uh, that serves the cities of Cambridge and Somerville. We've got about 267 kids in 15 classrooms across the two cities, uh, serving three and four year olds, um, all very, very low income families. Um, and that's our biggest program. We have a homelessness prevention program that works with folks that have been issued an eviction notice. Uh, we're, the goal of the program, obviously, is to try to keep them in their homes if we can. And so that can be anything from a, a conversation with their landlord to resolve a misunderstanding, right up to working with them all the way through the formal court eviction process, if that's necessary. Um, and if we can't keep them housed in their existing housing, then we'll help them find other housing somewhere. Um, typically not in Somerville these days, unfortunately, but mm. wherever we can. Um, we are a VITA site. VITA is the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, which is a federally funded program that helps uh, low and moderate income people fill out and file their income tax forms hmm. for free. So anybody with a household income of under fifty-four thousand uh, dollars, can come to us, and we will help them do just that. Fill out mm. and file their tax forms, um, and then um, uh, we do from time to time uh, community and tenant organizing projects uh, when the need arises. Most recently, we helped the residents out at the Clarendon Hill uh, housing project form a tenants union and negotiate with the developers who are going to be rebuilding that project around issues like, um, you know, under what circumstances those tenants will be able to come back to the new buildings after the housing development is rebuilt, uh, what kind of amenities are going to be in the new, um, the new buildings, uh, whether their kids can stay in the Somerville schools while their buildings are being rebuilt, things like that. Mm. So a lot, of, a lot of very fundamental issues for the residents of that, of that development. So that's what we do. Very important work Thank uh, you. on the front of uh, housing. And, and so many other like important issues to Somervillians in general, but yeah. you know when it when it comes to people of lesser means and of lower incomes, yeah. then it becomes one of survival. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm sure my colleagues will agree. I mean, people tend to see Somerville these days as a, a very up and coming city. We have a, a reputation uh, as a you know a hot place to live and hot real estate market and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But we have about a 13 and a half percent poverty rate. And we have an awful lot of folks living just above that poverty line that aren't technically poor, but are nonetheless struggling economically mm. uh, a great deal. So there's, there's no shortage of need in the city. Hmm. Yeah. And Lisa, uh, what can you tell us about Shape Up Somerville? Sure. So Shape Up Somerville is a healthy eating, active living office in Health and Human Services, which is um, within the city of Somerville. Um, so we care a lot about you know, where food is coming from, making sure people have access to nourishing food because it's the foundation for being well and having optimal health, you know, positive health outcomes, um, also tied to, you know, being a, like a, you know, having good academic outcome, um, being able to get to work, being healthy at work, all those pieces we see as being all connected. Um, so we don't do any direct food programs in the 
winter time, but actually in the summertime, hopefully people know us through the Somerville Mobile Farmers Market. Um, and that's a truck that goes to four different place on, places on Fridays and Saturdays um, throughout the city selling affordable um, produce, farm fresh produce. Um, for everybody, but we have a great match program. So anyone who uses SNAP or WIC um, or lives in public housing gets 50% off their purchase. Um, so I should mention that, so year round, one of the things we try to do along with a lot of our colleagues in the city is just know about all the resources that exist so then we can point our constituents to those resources. Um, we wear a hat which is a member of the Somerville Food Security Coalition meeting, which is largely the hat I'm wearing today, um, to just um, where it brings together people who are already talking about food security and food access, um, and to just highlight that it's open to everybody. That program actually is through, or that coalition, I should say, is um, initiated through the Somerville Homeless Coalition and Cambridge Health Alliance, led by Lisa Brucolacchio. Um, so I can share more about that later. Thank you. Yeah. And, and Dave, how about Project Soup? Well, Project Soup is the food pantry associated with the Somerville Homeless Coalition. So as David was mentioning earlier, homelessness within the city of Somerville itself is a big issue, and the Somerville Homeless Coalition drives a lot of those issues. On the pantry side of things, the food security side of things, that's where the pantry comes in. We provide um, staples as well as trying to produce as much, provide as much fresh produce as possible. So we're working with the Greater Boston Food Bank, Mobile Market, all their CSAs um, within the area, excuse me, and trying to um, provide as much fresh produce as possible mm -hmm. to our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide it to low income uh, Somerville residents and um, when we can't help them, we try to provide the, the pointer to other resources that can. And uh, when you say that you can't help them, is that is that because you're... you're yeah, our, our charter requires that they live in Somerville, so, okay. so but a lot of times, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of people from other communities come in and we make sure that they get the help that they need as well. Mm. And we were talking beforehand about the partial government shutdown uh, that, that recently ended and um, how it impacted each of your agencies and how past shutdowns have impacted each of your agencies. And one thing that came up was um, SNAP benefits. Um, David, would you mind um, telling us about um, SNAP benefits and especially with this partial shutdown, um, how those benefits were allocated and the impact that it's, it's gonna have? Sure. Um, so SNAP is what we now call what used to be known as food stamps and it's intended to be a supplement for people to make sure they have enough to you know get enough food for the month uh, it's not intended to cover an entire month's worth of groceries really for anybody um, you'd have to be pretty amazing planner and cook to get through a month mm. on snap alone but um, uh, w the way SNAP normally works is at the beginning of the month, uh, the federal government loads up a, a debit card essentially with your allocation for the, for the rest of that month. And so you know that the money that's there at the start of the month, you've got to make that last to the end of whatever month we're talking about. So um, in early January, SNAP recipients got their January allocation of funds. And then around February, uh, sorry, around January 17th, a second allocation of money showed up on people's cards and there was no advance warning of why this was being done. It's just suddenly there was a big chunk of money on the mm -hmm. cards. And it turns out that that was the federal government giving people their February money on January 17th, but there was no warning, there was no notice saying, hey, you're going to have to make this money last through the end of February. Um, and because it was you know, two weeks earlier than normal, people weren't really associating it with February yet either. A few days after that happened, um, a robocall went out from the federal government to a large number of SNAP recipients, not all of them. It went out in English and Spanish only, uh, which leaves out a lot of people. Mm. And of course, many people didn't bother answering their phones when they saw this unknown number crop up saying, you know, you, you have a phone call from who, you know, who answers right. these, all these robocalls. So a lot of people did not get the word, and I think many people still don't really understand that the money that's on their cards now is supposed to last through the end of February. Hmm. So I think the practical effect of this is that a lot of SNAP recipients are going to 
have difficulty uh, perhaps managing that money and will potentially run out of you know, this benefit sometime around the middle of February. And, and we're going to see a lot of demand on pantries and other resources then. Um, we've started a food drive at CAS asking people to donate you know, non-perishable items, uh, women's articles, baby formula, things like that, anything that we can give to our Head Start families who are the population we most closely serve. Um, but I think any, anybody that's working with low-income folks right now has got to be thinking about how to, how to find more food resources for them. It's going to be very difficult to manage. So at, at a food pantry, yeah, Project Yeah, we're, we're exactly um, <coughs> planning for, for yeah. just such a situation. We're expecting um, that towards the end of February, we're going to have an increased uh, visit rate um, because people will have used their SNAP benefits. Mm -hmm. um, that's exactly what we're planning for. And uh, so how are you planning for that? Well, we're working with the Greater Boston Food Bank and making sure we have enough in-house in um, but we're also um, asking, we've got all sorts of social media requests out for um, peanut butter, oil, coffee, mm -hmm. things like that, soaps, um, things that I'm, I can't buy at the Greater Boston Food Bank, a lot of toiletries, toilet paper, yeah. things like that. And um, at Shape Up Somerville, uh, as, a, as a, uh, a city agency, mm -hmm. um, what 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 is how is the city uh, positioned um, in times like this? Um, is it ne something necessarily that your agency deals with? I would say less so ours. Our goal is to just make sure we're collecting the information, making sure it's disseminated to organizations. You know, um, CAS and Project Soup are the our service providers. We want to make sure they have flyers, just material that takes a lot of time to put together sometimes so that mm -hmm. they can hand it to their um, clients so that they know sort of where else there are resources in the community. We also have um, some other providers within HHS who can help. So things to highlight are if you, um, we have a social worker, um, Lucy Quintanella, who um, you can call and she can direct you to a place um, in the, you know, based on what your needs are in the community. Council on Aging is a great resource within the city. Um, and 311 is always a great place to call if you're not sure where to go and they can direct you to the right place mm -hmm. as well. So we're sort of trying to make sure that all constituents are served within the city and that we can point them. We partner closely with um, community organizations who do the service. Were, were there instances in this um, partial government shutdown uh, where people were coming to your agency and, and looking for help with housing? Was there, was there uh, an increase in that, or was there anything that you can talk about around, uh, sur surrounding that? Um, not this time around, mm -hmm. uh, mainly because, so this was a tricky one. Um, in the past, the, when the federal government is shut down, the whole thing is shut down, right? Um, and you have agencies across the board are affected and all services are affected. This time around, only some agencies were mm. affected. So, for example, the, the money we get to fund Head Start, for example, was not affected. That money had been allocated for the rest of the year, so there was no disruption in Head Start. One of the agencies that was affected was HUD, which manages, of course, Section 8 housing, a whole lot of federally subsidized housing. And there have been a lot of reports of disruptions to HUD Section 8 contracts that were in the process of being renewed mm. They weren't able to finish the renewal process before the shutdown began, and so it's, it's unclear right now exactly how that's going to play out. Potentially, there are thousands of people across the country who will be affected by this, whose, whose landlords will not be receiving their subsidies um, to continue their low-income housing. Mm. Um, Hopefully, they'll be able to you know, pick up the process and get those contracts renewed and keep people housed without any immediate uh, effect. But we, we don't know. Uh, I, think, I think the main thing that we're going to see this time around is just you know, a ripple effect of, of uh, because this went on for so long and it affected so many federal workers as well as folks dependent on various kinds of federal and state you know, don't forget that a lot of the state subsidies are funded through the federal government right. too. You know, you're going to see a lot of people uh, 
the disruption is going to take time to play out. Mm -hmm. And we, as, just as we're saying, you know, it'll be late February before we really start to see the effects of the food issue, it's really hard to say exactly how the housing thing will play out, too. Mm. It, it could show up in a, in a month or two with an increase in problems. We just don't know. Yeah. But it, it, we were also talking that it didn't directly affect any of your funding. It did not directly affect our funding this time around simply because the agencies that fund us were not ones that were shut down mm. through this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we were also talking a little bit about um, that you, uh, Project Soup and CAS are nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And so you do rely a lot on outside donations Absolutely. for your funding. Yeah. Um, do you, do you want to talk a little yeah. bit about how you get those and sure. where, where people might have the sure. opportunity to donate? Yeah. Um, so anybody can go to our website, which is www.caasomerville.org, and there's a prominent Donate Here <laughs> button. Um, we, we need to raise uh, several hundred thousand dollars every year uh, to supplement our, our funding. Um, and uh, we do that through both, you know, just folks coming onto the website and giving. We send out fundraising letters, of course, so please open those and respond. Um, w this coming Tuesday, we will be having a benefit over at Flatbreads at Sacco's Bowlhaven in Davis Square. Uh, any flatbread sold that evening, a portion of it will come to Cass. So go to Sacco's and get a pizza. <laughs> Do you, bread, do, bread, you do, of, <laughs> <laughs> do you do a lot of Do you do a lot of partnerships with uh, area businesses? Yeah, like we that? try to. Oh, we, do, we do. Yeah. We do. Yeah, we we don't do a big annual gala or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, we we tend to do a lot of small events. Um, so you might see us at like the comedy studio here in Union Square, or at um, one of the local breweries, or Brooklyn Boulders, or you know, we tend to do things at the the local businesses like that periodically, as often as we can. And those are great. Those are both a great way to raise a little bit of money and raise awareness. Get a lot of folks interested that Definitely. way. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, Project Soup? Uh, we do do some of those small events, but we also have the big gala. Yeah. Um, it is going to be March 28th. It's called Spring Into Action. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be at the Row Hotel over at Assembly Row. Oh, very nice. nice. Yeah. Space. So that's uh, that should be a nice event. Mm -hmm. And is that the the one fundraising? That's our one big gala. Okay. But we do other um, events, race road races, where uh, things like that, where we sponsor uh, those as well. Very nice. Yep. And what what's on your calendar for the year? Um, is there any is there any special program that you have coming up, or well, this is anything that you work towards? <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's see. Well, we're always thinking about the mobile market, but I would say this is very unrelated. Um, well, uh, David worked with us on the um, more related, the food system assessment, which is um, was looking at the food landscape mm. in Somerville. So that's a really great place to find just what's happening in Somerville as it relates to all activities in the food system. So we're hoping to be rolling out. We have a draft of a food plan, and we're hoping to roll that out and solely th with a lot of people. Um, to be sort of seeing how we can be making a difference in improving healthy food access for people, um, whether that's through availability of food or even thinking about work opportunities as Somerville grows, as um, more restaurants come here, mm -hmm. the food service sector grows. We, we do a lot of tabling events. So okay. because we shape up it largely is thinking about how can people be healthy on a community level. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, sort of free opportunities to eat well and be active. So we do a lot of like, do you know about all the parks in Somerville? Mm -hmm. um, when you see 95210 banners, that's um, in collaboration with the schools and Cambridge Health Alliance and other partners just to bring attention to healthy behavior. So one thing that we're excited about is um, at the end of April is Screen Free Week. And we're hoping to, with many other partners, be addressing like, hey, how do we sort of unplug for a little bit, mm -hmm. um, connecting how that you know connects to our health and to our like our mental health, our physical health. I'm um, just trying to start awareness and conversations about that. That hopefully maybe will lead to some policy change. Um, that's hard to do on a community level, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Very nice. Well, uh, is there anything else that anyone? I'd like wants to just to mention one mention. <laughs> one thing yes. is that the. Um, Project Soup does meals. Um, we sponsor a weekly meal over on College Ave, the First Church, every Monday evening. And we do a monthly meal on Broadway at the Connection Church. Um, that's the fourth Wednesday of every month and every Monday in, in West Somerville. 
Somewhere and the details can be found on, on the website, website, which is? So the website for the Somerville Homeless Coalition is somervillehomelesscoalition.org. And, and I would like to mention this. This is as we're thinking about as people stretch their food dollars by the end of February as we expect mm -hmm. that or throughout any time of the year. Um, this is a really good resource. It's the Food Resource Guide. You can find it online in um, four different languages. It's um, SomervilleFoodSecurityCoalition.org um, is where you can find it and it tells you all the places that you can find community meals, different food pantries, um, because we have more than one in Somerville. Mm -hmm. We have about seven. Um, uh, lunches primarily that serve seniors, uh, bag programs that serve seniors, and there's other information about transportation because we know that sometimes it's just a, as much about getting to food sources. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big one. And I want to also mention just quickly the Project Bread hotline that you can call um, that if you, again, are not sure about where to get food resources in the community, that's a good place to call that, and they can direct you. Okay, one more thing I'd like to mention is the Save Our Homes Walk, which is a collaborative fundraising uh, program of the Somerville Homeless Coalition, the Somerville Community Corporation, and CAS, and uh, uh, Cambridge and Somerville Legal Services, and the city's Office of Housing Stability. Uh, all of us collaborate every spring to do a walk that raises money which is used um, specifically to fund emergencies that people are having in the housing field. So if they've, you know, they're just behind on their rent by a couple hundred dollars and that's the difference between them being homeless or being able to stay in their apartment, that fund of money is available to help take care of small things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I can't emphasize enough how important that is. It's really expensive to put people into homeless shelters. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly expensive. And if you can spend a couple hundred bucks and keep somebody in their home, it's well worth doing that. So we really encourage people to either um, you know, sponsor somebody in the walk or come out and walk yourself and, and raise money with us. Usually late May typically is when that happens. Well, thank you all very much for, for coming into the studio today to talk with us about each of your agencies and what it is that you do. Um, and I, I hope that, uh, you know, this acts as a way for, for people to reach out to you that maybe didn't know, you know, maybe they were struggling with housing, maybe they, they were struggling with, with um, finding, you know, food at a particular time of the month. Yeah. Um, so hopefully this, this will help people that need your services get them.